The most common organisms in the ocean are often very small crustacean-like creatures, which are known as krill, also organisms called copepods. They can rise together every day over hundreds of meters in groups by the millions or even the billions. And in that motion, they carry water with them or they stir the surrounding water. It's been thought for a long time that these animals are too small to have a really important impact on global ocean circulation. And yet, in our lab experiments here, we found that they can have a huge impact by swimming together. So the animals I work with are brine shrimp, commonly known as sea monkeys, and we use them as a representative animal for marine zooplankton. We use these brine shrimp to mimic these migrations and try and study the fluid mechanics. And because these animals are phototactic or attracted to light, we can actually use lights to control their migrations. So what we do in the laboratory is to use a series of lasers and other light stimuli to trick the animals into undergoing vertical migrations that are very similar to what they would do in the ocean. These animals create a very strong downward flow as they swim up. What was surprising to us though is that in the groups, the amount of downward flow they create is enormous. It can be up to 100 times greater than their upward motion individually. And so what that means is that even though these animals are only a few centimeters in size or less, they're able to create very large scale flows when they swim in a group. Translated to the ocean, that suggests that these organisms can have a very large impact on the structure of the water column. By that I mean the amount of carbon that's being transported downward, the amount of nutrients that are being brought up to the surface. Because we know that the ocean is connected to the atmosphere, large-scale climate effects could potentially be impacted by these biological organisms. A really helpful next step will be to have better cameras with better accessibility to great depths in the ocean to actually see what's going on, how the animals are swimming, how close they're swimming, and then even try and measure any sort of flow field. One of the important consequences of this work is in how we think about the role of the ocean in global climate. Right now, a lot of our climate models don't include the effect of animals. What this work suggests is that there might be a very important coupling between the animals and the ocean itself. It suggests that the effects of our pollution, of overfishing, of the acidification of the ocean might have more severe consequences than we currently appreciate. But it's going to require more research and research out in the field to confirm those effects. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.